share. Um, let's see here. Um, hang on a second. Am I? Sh can you see my screen? Yep. Okay. Let me. Okay, can everyone see that? Yep. Yeah. Good. So, uh, hello everyone. Hola. Um, Hola. <laughs> Andres, how many people are with you? Hi. Or maybe, Radhika, could you ask how many people are there? Uh, ¿Cuántas personas hay contigo, Andrés? Veo a Anabel. Hola, Anabel. Estoy precisamente Hello. viendo. Hello, how are you? I'm fine. I think there may be a couple of people with Andrés. Andrés, ¿están vosotros uh, más que dos? O? Sí, estoy enviando la invitación a algunos compañeros que recién están conectándose. Ajá, uh -huh. ok. He's, he's sharing the invitation right now with a couple of other people. Oh, I see. That are going to join. So maybe we should wait a couple more minutes. Yeah, that's fine. Let me get off the screen share because it would be good if we can introduce ourselves. Yeah, definitely. I think that's much better. Yeah. So let me go back to uh, stop sharing. Yeah. Ah, here we go. I can see some people. Yeah, that's... Uh, Annabelle? Yes. Uh, hola. <laughs> Hello. How are you? I'm fine. How are you? Fine, fine. Thank you. So, are you in uh, Bogota? No, I'm in Papayan now. Oh, you're in Papayan? Okay. Yes, I live there. I live here. Okay, wonderful. Mm -hmm. um, all right. So, welcome. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. Um, and Andres um, is on. Mm -hmm. Andres is also in Papayan? Yes. Ah, I live here. Everyone's Papayan. on. Everybody's, I think, in Papayan. Okay, wonderful. Um, good. And I know. Oh, Leonardo is here yeah, too. Leonardo's been on for a while. So, hola, Leonardo. Hola, Leonardo. He's on mute. Hola, Raika. How are you? How are you? Qué gusto. Qué gusto. <laughs> okay, el gusto es mío. Simplemente, hola a todos. Andrés, Anabel, yo estoy aquí acompañándolos en el inicio acá, eh, mientras que Luis también ya va a conectarse un ratico y, y nada, un placer saludarlos a todos. Vale, Leonardo, igualmente. Gracias, lo mismo. Ok, ok, muy bien, continúo. Uh -huh. uh, ¿Will there be some other people joining, uh, Andrés? ¿Habrán otra, otros compañeros que, que van a acompañarles? A, a acompañarles? Sí. sí. Sí, pero no me han respondido. Entonces yo creo que lo mejor es que iniciemos. Sí, mejor que sí. I think we just start because uh, he doesn't really know they're really responding, Jordan. So. Oh. So let's just I think initiate. Maybe we'll just do int intros for now. Okay. Well, um, it looks like Annabelle, uh, you are our our, our audience. <laughs> <laughs> and Andres. <laughs> so nice to meet you. And okay, um, you. yeah. Uh, so my name is Jordan, and I have been, uh, I'm based here in Silicon Valley, and I've been working with startups for about um, 16 years. Uh, I started my own startup uh, about 16 years ago, and I've done about um, anywhere between three to five different companies, depending upon how you, how you look at it. Um, have raised about $60 million uh, for those companies as well as, as others that I've worked with and um, have done, have been with the uh, video game space for about 10 years. I actually started uh, with MMOs, uh, so massively multiplayer online games, and then moved from MMOs to uh, mobile. So I started with mobile in 2005 um, before mobile was really popular. Um, and just working with carriers and, and the deck and things like that. Um, I've worked primarily PC games and mobile, and I've been involved, you know, with the industry uh, for quite a long time, and have been a mentor uh, to uh, mobile games companies for, for quite a while. 
So nice to meet you. Um, and I have also worked for about 10 years in terms of helping companies to enter the Silicon Valley. So games, fundraising, Silicon Valley, international companies. That kind of, those are the key words to think about for me. Uh, Radhika? Hola, Anabel uh, y Andrés. Um, es un placer uh, hablar con, con vosotros. Uh, yo también uh, tengo una base de experiencia en marketing, unos 15 años, uh, más de 15 años en marketing. Y um, yo tenía dos startups yo, yo misma. <ríe> Soy emprendedora también y con bastante experiencia trabajando con uh, startups también en los uh, dos últimos años um, y hace un año que conocí a Jordan y empezamos a trabajar juntos en proyectos y colaborar en varias in iniciativas y estamos uh, trabajando con startups um, desde el mundo entero, <risa> desde Asia, Europa, uh, Israel y ahora también en Colombia. Estamos muy emocionados uh, para trabajar con vos, vosotros y a ver si podremos uh, colaborar uh, en varias uh, formas. Uh, estamos uh, listos a, a este proyecto de mentoría y uh, espero que les, ayudan, le, les ayudamos un poco. <risa> so, vale. Claro que sí. Eh, nosotros también queremos iniciar un, pues un proceso, un avance en cada una de las de las etapas que está viviendo el emprendimiento o nuestro startup, entonces eh, pues con muchísimas expectativas de todo, de toda la experiencia que ustedes tienen, de todo lo que nos puedan colaborar y nos puedan ayudar en cada uno de nuestras, pues de nuestro avance, ¿no? Perfecto. So, uh, sí, claro. Jordan, uh, did you understand or most of it or? No, uh, just. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> well, she was just saying that you know, they're really looking forward to the experience that we're going to share with them because uh, she's also looking at the different stages that a startup has to go to go through. So she's uh, uh, looking forward to everything that we're going to share with them. Okay, great. Um, all right. So very nice to uh, meet you. About. Andres, were you, were you going to say something? Or? Okay. Eh, pues nada, eh, agradecerles por, por trabajar con nosotros. Eh, nosotros también estamos... Eh, muy entusiasmados por estas consultorías que tenemos con ustedes. Eh, esperamos que en estas sesiones pues, sea lo más provechoso posible eh, el poder tener la experiencia de ustedes y, y la base de experiencia que también hemos ganado nosotros para poder generar productos pues, de impacto global. Eso es lo que siempre hemos tratado de, de hacer. Perfecto. So, basically thanking us for um, sharing our expertise and knowledge with him, and he's looking forward to, you know, everything that we're going to share with him as well. Okay, great. So. Well, let me move on to the presentation. Um, so we have a presentation that is about um, um, the state of the global games market, and so let me go ahead and share that, and I will play the presentation. Uh, so can everyone see that? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. So um, uh, Radhika and I have uh, separate companies right now, but we're moving to a single company. And the company is called Double Nova Group. So this is our first presentation at <laughs> Double Nova. Uh, and so you can just remember us as the Double Nova Group. Okay. So um, the global games market is in a really good stage, or in a really good state right now. As you can see uh, from this graph, uh, and about... You need to play the, play the slideshow, Jordan. Oh, you can't see it? No. I'm playing it. You okay. Can. We're not seeing it. Ah, okay. So, let me... Yeah, why don't you advance... Uh, sorry to interrupt. Yeah, no, thank you. Um, stop sharing. Let me share again. Um, can you see that? Um, not yet. <clears throat> there. <clears throat> we see the, the second slide. Right, and if I play, can you see it bigger? Um, no. No. We're still seeing it in PowerPoint sort of slide, the deck mode. Yeah, okay. Google's technologies don't usually work very well with me. <laughs> so, 
<laughs> um, try to, again. Um, if not, you know, I can try to do it too and see if that works any better. Yeah. Um, just have to send it over. Let me see. Maybe I'll just go with screen. Um, so can you see that? Not yet. Now we can. Oh. And then um, can you see that? Yes. Yes. OK. All right. So this is the state of the global games market. It's a really good time you know, to be getting into the market. This slide really has two different kinds of information. There is the uh, total market size, and then there's the mobile. And what you can see is, is that right now, 2013, 2014, the market is about 75 billion US dollars, and so it's a very big market. And the market is growing in total to over a hundred billion, so it's a, the video games market is going to be over a hundred billion dollars, uh, and this is very interesting for me, because I started working, like I mentioned, with the market in uh, about two thousand and one, mm -hmm. and at that time the global games market was around ten billion, so mm -hmm. it's about ten times bigger, in um, you know like uh, twelve thirteen years. So it has grown pretty much exponentially. Um, the other important component is mobile. Mobile was tiny when I started working with it. It was a few millions. <laughs> it was really nothing to speak of. And now the market today is around 18 billion, and it's going to double in four years. So it's growing, as you can see, at about 19%. So mobile games are growing at about 19%. The overall games market is growing at about 8%, okay. and um, the mobile games market will be around 35% of the total games market in about uh, three, four years' time. So, um, and if you look um, at the, you know, the growth from 2012 to 2017, uh, there's, there's a growth from 18 to, say, 34 percent um, over that period of time, and, and the market is just growing very quickly. Um, any questions about that, Annabelle? Or you already might know this. Oh, it's okay. okay. It's okay. It's okay. Okay. Can you see this next slide? Okay. All right. Good. So this is another slide which it has a different kind of information and I really want to just focus on the, um, the graph, the, the icons that are at the top here. And so what you can see is if you look at all segments, the, um, they're not all growing at the same rate, obviously. The fastest growing area are tablets. Um, so if you look at the tablet market, it's growing at nearly 50%. You might want to uh, circle the icon that you're referring to. Yeah, I can't actually. Or just put your cursor over it. Yeah, I can't get my cursor. Um, oh, okay. I might just need to go here. So let me do this um, and just uh, do it like this. So this is the tablet market, and you can see it's growing at around 50%. The mobile market is, you know, like we mentioned, growing at around 19% for smartphone. Um, and it's the bigger component right now. It's the smartphone market, but the tablet market is, is also you know, growing. The PC market by itself is declining. So this is negative, negative 6%. Handhelds, because they are getting, um, their market share is being eaten by these mobile components is also shrinking at the highest rate. It's shrinking at 15%. Mm -hmm. The uh, social and casual is also not declining rapidly, but it is also declining. Mm -hmm. um, the uh, MMOs, which is where I started, so I've spent most of my time with MMOs and with mobile, and you can see that these are good sectors uh, to spend time with. Mm -hmm. because they are continuing to grow at double digits. All the other segments are, you know, are not growing that rapidly or they're shrinking. 
and in most cases they're shrinking. So this number for the overall market is a little bit misleading because it might look like the overall games industry is doing well, but when you look at it in detail, you see, you no, know, it's really the mobile sector and MMOs, and that's really where you want to focus. Uh, everywhere else is really a declining uh, marketplace, even though the overall marketplace continues to grow. So any questions about that? No, it's okay. Okay, good. So this uh, next slide, um, this is about the um, just taking a snapshot at now and just looking at market share and number of users and revenue. Mm -hmm. And so it's a pretty interesting slide. You can see that uh, mobile, even though it started after casual and casual web games, is mm -hmm. actually a bigger market. It's already about 13 billion whereas casual web games are about 7.4 billion, even though the number of users are nearly the same. So it's about 1.2 billion users, and there's 1.1 billion with games, uh, sorry, mobile games. Um, this is monetizing a lot better, uh, nearly double. So much better space to be in for mobile uh, than casual web games. Mobile is actually, even though MMOs have been around for a really long time, it's already catching up to MMOs and it will surpass them because it's growing at a much faster rate. Um, the console market has always been the big one, right, 31%. Um, but it's, again, it's declining. But you can see it's a smaller total market in terms of users. The largest market, that's the one that's going to dominate, is really here, uh, mobile phone as well as, as tablet. So these are really the best places uh, to be going if you're a new, uh, a new developer, especially because for an MMO, you know, these take millions of dollars and maybe two, three years to produce, whereas these take a much shorter time. So you probably already knew that, but, you know, this is just, if you're, if you're developing for mobile, uh, you're in a really good place. Any questions about that? No, it's good. Okay. All right. So this one is really looking at the global games market by region. Um, what you can see is that Latin America is about 4%. Um, and the other three regions are much larger. So the, the Latin American region is the smallest. And this is dominated by Brazil. So what this means is if you're producing games in Latin America, you really want to go global very quickly. The closest market is going to be North America. And what you can see is it's nearly 10 times larger. Um, and if you're in an individual country in Latin America, this is mostly the US. And so your market might be 100 times bigger, right? So maybe the market in Colombia might be a few hundred million. This is a $22 billion market. So by taking your games to the North American market, the North American market is 100 times larger, um, even though it has the same number of gamers, roughly. It just has much better monetization, and the market is much more mature. Mm -hmm. The uh, European market, another good one, you can see there's a lot more uh, gamers, uh, 520 million if you include um, Middle East and Africa. Um, a little bit smaller than North America, even with all that, even with all those players. Um, and then the largest in the world is Asia Pacific. And this is usually a good place to get an acquisition from. And you can see that by far there's the most number of players. What you can probably tell is, is the greatest monetization is in North America, followed by Europe, then it goes to Asia Pacific, and then Latin America. And in total, there's um, over one and a half billion gamers. Mm -hmm. So if you're a gamer, there's a lot of other gamers. Mm -hmm. and, and this is also a very interesting number for me, because if you look back just 12 or 13 you know, years ago, this number was around 100 million. Mm -hmm. and so social games really exploded the whole market to you know, everybody becoming a gamer. And then mobile phones, you know, just increased it even more. <laughs> so this is just a crazy big number. 
this is a yeah. huge number. And, um, you know, the good thing is there aren't that many places that you'd want to go. Um, in, you know, North America is really one country. There's really maybe three in Asia Pacific. Um, and then Europe, another, you know, two to three countries. Mm -hmm. So you can go to the biggest gaming markets in the world, and you can cover maybe the whole world with ten, ten markets. This, uh, this slide looks at monetization. Um, mm -hmm. And so what you can see is, is that the highest monetization is, um, again, in the Asia-Pacific region. Um, this gives you also an understanding of the average spend. Yeah. So not surprisingly, the highest spend you know, in the world is going to be here in uh, North America. Um, the year-on-year -year growth is about 25%, which is higher than Asia-Pacific. Latin America actually has the highest year-on-year -year growth. Uh, but it has a very small, this is about, you know, um, it's less than 15% of, of this number, for the 74 cents uh, average spend. And um, this number here versus this one is number of paying users versus players. So um, the numbers aren't that different, right? You look at Latin America, 148 million versus 152, and 57 million in terms of payers, versus 66 million in North America. But again, people are spending a lot more yeah, money. Yeah. And so you get like uh, 10 times as much money by going to the North American market. Um, so 5 billion versus 500 million. And, and keeping in mind that most of the players in uh, Latin America are again in uh, Brazil and Mexico. Mm -hmm. So, anyway, this is an overview. Um, there's one more slide here in the uh, global overview section, which is kind of interesting. Um, Radhika, did you want to go over this one? Yeah, sure. Uh, so what's in really interesting about this that got me really excited about Latin America anyway, again, the, uh, the second uh, uh, figure in growth potential, remember we, we looked at that in the previous slide, there's five stars here which basically shows um, that Latin America has the highest growth potential and that's really very exciting to see. Um, then the other point that I thought was really interesting for Latin America is that the global appeal, so what people find exciting uh, for mobile game publishers, uh, is also very exciting. So you can see North America, um, Asia Pacific, and Latin America rank very highly in terms of global appeal. So that's very exciting. It's good news for Latin American game developers um, saying that there's the highest growth potential as well as the largest growth appeal. The point that uh, needs, you know, that you need to keep in mind and makes more sense to go and leverage other markets is that the mobile games market size is uh, a little bit less in Latin America than other areas, like in Asia Pacific, for example, uh, in terms of the estimated mobile games in uh, revenue in uh, 2014. Mainly the revenue is lower because, as Jordan was explaining, it's monetizing uh, less. People are, the average spend is less. So um, that's always uh, a factor that's driving down a little bit the revenue in, uh, in Latin America. But it makes more sense to expand to North America or other markets uh, to grow your revenue. Yeah, that's very good. One thing here to see is that this is iOS, mm -hmm. so Apple versus Android, and you can see that monetization outside of Brazil and Mexico, so this would be the other countries, uh, it's about half. Yeah. So if you're launching on Android, your revenues are about half of if you're launching on Apple. It's uh, similar in uh, the US, so if you look at North America, 378 for Apple versus 230. Yeah. Um, it's closer in Europe, and actually, if you go to Asia, it's nearly the same. So there's uh, there's very little difference uh, unless you go to China, and then still yeah. it's close. the uh, The biggest discrepancies are going to be in Latin America, and also in in Eastern Europe. But keep in mind, you're probably not going to be launching your games for Latin America mm, yeah. because the market is small. And so, you know, either the U.S., uh, Europe, or, or Asia 
And uh, in all cases, iOS is the, uh, the best platform from a monetization standpoint. Um, so any questions about any of that? No, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay? All right. So now we're going to... So we've given an overview of the global market. Um, what we'd like to do now is talk more about developers. And so the previous slides were from Nuzu. Nuzu is a, a good analyst for the global games market. This one, um, I spoke at a Pocket Gamer conference in Finland, because uh, you might have heard Finland is a very big market uh, for games uh, development, not for monetization, <laughs> but for development. And so I was speaking up there. And this is one of the uh, presentations. The Pocket Gamer put on the conference and then provided uh, the survey. So I just wanted to provide some of the uh, findings uh, from that survey. And this survey was just done uh, at the beginning of this year. So it's, uh, it's very current. And what it says, um, so I have a few slides here. but. What this um, first slide is about is how much are game developers typically spending to build games? And, you know, um, we talked about the MMO, for example, taking millions of dollars and taking years to produce. The good thing about mobile games is that you can see about 50% of, um, right over here, 50% are spending less than $50,000 on, uh, on their games. Um, and if you look here, about 80% are spending less than 200,000. So there's very few games that are more than 200,000. Actually, there's only about, um, you know, 20% uh, because this is 80. So 80% of games are under 200,000 and only 20% um, are more. And the max is, uh, these are these are big, but those are going to be put on by the big publishers. So like, you know, EA and uh, Blizzard and, you know, Activision Blizzard and and others. But um, any, any questions about that? Oh, perfect. Okay. So um, this next one is, what's the average team size uh, required to make your mobile games? And what you'll see here is about um, nearly 90% of teams are less than 10. Yeah. And if you look at this uh, 1 to 5, it's about 63%. So teams tend to be quite small. They're not, you know, teams of 100, right? This is teams over 100 or I mean, like less than 1% of all mobile games. And obviously those are the most expensive ones. But... Uh, you know, you don't need more than 10 people uh, to build a mobile game. And in most cases, you're going to need five or less. Uh, any questions about that? No. Okay. All right. So this next one is, you know, which business models are the best? And, you know, at the very beginning, it was very much about paid games, right? Most games were, um, were paid. And then there was the revenue share with the carrier <laughs> in the old days. Um, paid games are still available, right? Um, but the in-app purchases or you know freemium kind of a model is is the most popular, um, also known as free-to-play in in the MMO MMO world. Uh, In-game advertising, right, is number two. So. Um, if we see here in-app purchases, nearly 80%. Mm -hmm. um, In-game advertising, about 64%. And then paid games, about 44%. So these are the three primary uh, business models that exist out there today. Any, any questions on that? All right. It's OK. It's OK. okay. So this next one is um, ranking the importance in terms of what leads to a game being successful. And uh, interestingly enough, number one is game quality. 
So if you don't have a good game, it's going to be hard to make it successful. Um, that being said, you know, you can have marketing and advertising to get it out to the most number of people. And then the monetization method. So there's been a movement to more of the freemium model because then more people are willing to try it. And then a percentage will convert. Um, and that tends to be more successful than the paid model because a lot of people see the price and they're like, well, I don't really want to pay for the game. Um, you know, I want to try it first. Um, so, so those are, you know, the, uh, the key things. Also, um, critical acclaim, which is, again, um, uh, about quality, right? Do people like the game or not? Uh, is also uh, pretty important. And then if you're a bigger company, uh, you know, brand is obviously going to be important as well. So those should be uh, pretty straightforward. In terms of platforms, this is, um, you know, uh, a look at the uh, key platforms. You can see that iOS, uh, you know, clearly dominates, um, again, because it has the highest monetization. The highest, yes. Yeah. And then from there, it's going to go to Android. Um, and BlackBerry is, you know, close to zero. Yeah, it actually says zero percent as a core format. Uh, there are people that are looking at it as a secondary format, but it's not really that popular. Usually, the, uh, the um, what you can see here is that Windows. Windows Phone uh, is also popular. Um, and um, you know, even as a there's 11 percent that look at it as a core format, 25 percent as secondary, and then 40 percent looking at it as a potential format. So those are you know your key ones um, in terms of iOS, Android, and there's two here for Android. There's Core Android, and then there's also uh, Amazon. So that shouldn't be that um, you know uh, surprising, but uh, we thought we'd just you know put the information out there, and then you know what do you think are the key promotion channels? And interestingly, the number one uh, key promotion channel, which is right here, it's a little hard to read, but that's seventy-two percent, and this is word of mouth and uh, free viral marketing. So word of mouth still continues to be uh, the most important. That's followed by uh, social media, social networks, and then app store feature and search. This is going to be dominated by you know iOS. Mm -hmm. um, but those are your top three. Um, and so that's. Uh, did you want to say anything about this, Radhika? No, I just was saying that you know there's a whole science now, uh, uh, you know, in addition to what you were saying behind uh, the App Store search methods. There's actually SEO type marketing uh, that you can use uh, to boost your visibility on the App Stores. Uh, even things like having the right logo, uh, expressive sort of uh, logo that can make a big difference. Having the right keyword searches in the App Store can also boost your visibility in the App Store. So there's a whole monetization or marketing sort of uh, angle that you can play on the App Store. So there's quite a lot of visibility you can get from that. Uh, can I add something? Sorry. I, yes. Can I add something from the previous slide uh, on the Microsoft part? Yeah. Uh, just out of what we have seen based on, on driving bananas, um, the Microsoft is putting a lot of effort to bring in developers and is giving them like interviews and free marketing. Uh, so far, we have got 20,000 downloads, uh, just free. They just pushed it. Wow. So, yeah, yeah so it's, uh, like we had like a 30,000 peak two days ago. Wow. So, so I think just something that is worth mentioning that maybe that one is rising. They have the money. We'll see. Yeah. I mean, this is the largest, nearly the largest potential format. Exactly. Yeah. So I think Microsoft has a lot of money. And mm -hmm. I was hoping, Luis, that you would mention it because you've gone <laughs> through this whole cycle, going yeah. global <laughs> and looking at the different formats, seeing how they've been working. And you come from Colombia, and so your insights are perfect because it's a real world 
real. <laughs> yeah, you know, tried a, a lot of the different things <laughs> and succeeded at different things. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What we've seen is that uh, yeah, like Microsoft is helping a lot. So one very important thing is that they will work with you personally. Like for Apple, like they, they just have so many games, but like they will interview you. They will put you in contact with possible alliances, and they they will give, they will push your game. They will feature the game. Um, so that's that's very important. And uh, like we also did, um, and oh, it was Amazon? Where is Amazon? Uh, Amazon, Amazon. Amazon, yeah. Blue. Yeah, we should, like blue. Yeah, when we did it, we pushed it. It wasn't very good, like not a lot. But they just released the phone, their 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 own phone, so that might change. Um, so yeah, true. Yeah. The Amazon phone. Yeah, yeah. I just saw it. It's very nice. Uh, so yeah, that was like my my input in that. I think Microsoft could be um, um, an emerging app. Uh, market that is worthwhile and they, they will give you all the tools and everything so you can purge your game so yeah great okay. okay so anyway that's the presentation that we have um, thank you Louis one more well, we, we covered that I think right the last one yeah and then uh, gracias thank <laughs> 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 you thank you yeah so, so that's the presentation. Um, happy to stop the uh, sharing the screen. Um, and uh, oh, it looks like we have someone else. Yeah. A yeah, couple of other people joined at, while you were presenting. Okay. So, so I think one to make sure for a second. One important thing right now would be to also. Uh, learn from so they, they like Andreas or one of them make makes a, a small pitch of their game. Um, this one thing is that uh, I've seen their game before, and while it's it's like mobile casual sort of, and then one strategy is so how do you build one this game and then build the next one and how do you aim it in the future as a company? Uh, so that's one thing that's important to know right now. Sure. Right now, right now. Sounds good. Yep. So yeah. I think it will be good if Andres makes a pitch for pitch Hola Luis, ¿me escuchas ahí? Hola, sí, sí. Bueno, pues, bueno, pues, espérate que tengo un rebote ahí. Espera, a ver. ¿Se me escuchan bien ahí? ¿Se escuchan bien ahí? Sí. Vale, pues lo que voy a, lo que voy a hacer es, es brevemente, brevemente pues, que, que, cuál es el juego que están trabajando en este momento. Sí, sí. Es un juego que, que no está finalizado totalmente. Sí, estamos trabajando sí, en él. Tienes, tienes un eco. No sé dónde está el eco. And you may mute themselves. We can mute. I can mute. Okay. Um, Luis? Yes. Okay, there's yeah, now it's, there's no uh, no echo. Yeah. I can definitely share the presentation as well. Okay. Okay, Luis ya me escucha mejor. Dale. Entonces, eh, pues obviamente lo tengo en español. Tú no sé cómo, cómo hacemos, si tú vas ayudándome a, a traducir ahí en, mientras avanzamos. Eh, sí, también, sí yo también puedo traducir. Okay, right. Listo, eh, el proyecto en el que trabajamos se llama Movo. Eh, Movo es un, es un juego de física y, y agilidad mental que hace uso... Eh, de, de diferentes fuerzas de gravedad que se pueden apreciar o, o, o usar en el espacio. Mm. El juego, eh, en el juego tienes que ayudar a un personaje que se llama Mo, quien es un repartidor espacial, eh, que pues por ser tan particular y, y despistado, pues eh, pierde su carga en el espacio, debe, eh, debe recuperarla para no perder su empleo y, y, y pues no decepcionar a, a su familia. Entonces la idea es en que, que en cada nivel 
pues se tenga que conseguir eh, la mayor cantidad de estampillas que a su vez son el, el, la moneda del juego y, y los paquetes pues que son los que él perdió para poder avanzar eh, en los niveles mientras se enfrenta pues a diferentes obstáculos que van a tener diferentes gravedades y que o te podrán hacer perder o te podrán ayudar a, a solventar algún, alguna, algún obstáculo, algún problema y eh, por pues los diferentes sistemas de gravedad que se puedan generar en el espacio, ¿no? pues digamos unos que atraigan, otros que repelen, otros que absorben y la idea de esto es pues eh, tratar de, de, de aprender esto, estas mecánicas eh, con, estos, con estos obstáculos y estos tipos de de gravedad mientras se puede eh, superar cierto nivel de la forma eh, de la mejor forma ¿no? no sé si hasta ahí eh, me escucharon bien o se perdió algo no escucho no escucho uh, <laughs> sí nos, esc nos escuchamos uh, Jordan I'm just going to translate a, a very high level So the game is really uh, kind of a, a, it's a, it's a casual game, but it's called Mo, and uh, the idea is uh, you've got a character that is trying to uh, balance different forces of gravity to advance in the game. Uh, there's various uh, uh, packets or cargo that he loses in space, I guess, and uh, while fighting other kinds of, or encountering other types of obstacles. And uh, the idea is to balance out all of that to keep advancing throughout the game, um, you know, understanding what the different gravitational forces are, uh, what the effects are, and then to, in, in the, to beat the other ob obstacles that are in the game. So that's kind of very, very high level uh, what the game's about. It's a physics game. I, I heard physics yeah, it's a physics game. Yeah, exactly. So it sounds interesting. interesting. Mm -hmm. um, And, and physics games that games that monetize, monetize pretty, well. pretty well. If they're if they're yeah. Yeah. so have have mechanics been mechanics been to account account with regards with regards to monetize, monetize or monetize or make the game fun game fun. Uh, es que las, uh, la, la cuestión que tiene que tenía Jordan es um, has uh, figurado las uh, las um, uh, las, la, los factores de, de físicas de, eh, eh, para avanzar en el, en el juego uh, en, en un sentido científico? Sí, de hecho, sí, de hecho estamos trabajando, trabajando con un grupo de investigación, investigación de la Universidad del Caura, que es una universidad bastante prestigiosa acá en, en el departamento. Estamos trabajando con un grupo de física, ellos son los que nos están ayudando a a darle soporte a todas estas eh, mecánicas y algoritmos eh, físicos que a la final vamos nosotros a implementar eh, dentro de dentro del juego. Um, Jordan, the answer is yes. They are actually working with, uh, um, you know, professionals in the science field as well to take into account all the factors uh, to, you know, that will affect. Um, um. To make it fun or for monetization? Um, ¿Es para la monetización o para que el juego sea más uh, divertido? Eh, perdón, ¿las estampillas? ¿Estampillas? Uh, ¿Las estampillas o, o no? Uh, ¿Es para la, las, uh, los factores de físicas que, que, que estabas uh, implementando? Uh -huh. ¿Esos factores son uh, cosas que puede, se pueden monetizar o, um, o que el juego que sea más divertido? Ya, yeah, ya. Yeah. Eh, no, pues la física, la física... Perdón, perdón. Es que tengo un eco ahí, un eco ahí. Como, okay. Voy eh, a hacer eh, mute. Ok, yo creo que mejoró. Eh, pues básicamente la física es el factor de... De, de entretenimiento, o sea, es como poder eh, poder tener la capacidad de, de, de avanzar según las diferentes dificultades que ésta genere, pero los factores de monetización van un poco más allá tal vez en el hecho de que hay eh, pues gadgets y hay eh, eh, 
elementos que se pueden que se pueden adquirir para que estos niveles sean mucho más fáciles de, 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 de lograr, de superar. El juego pues necesariamente eh, se supera si uno, si uno pues le invierte el tiempo y, y le invierte eh, pues las habilidades que uno vaya logrando, pero pues eh, no necesariamente uno tiene que adquirir eh, todas estas cosas, eh, estos gadgets, por así decirlo. Eh, sin embargo, pues obviamente los gadgets pues, se van a ayudar a, a facilitar eh, superar estos niveles y ahí es donde estamos pensando el tema de la monetización. Yo incluso en este momento les estoy compartiendo unos, unos archivos que, son, que hacen parte de, del arte y un poco a nivel... Eh, conceptual de, de cómo estaría compuesto el juego pues este juego ya nosotros eh, lo, 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 lo empezamos a trabajar el anterior año, sino que por otro tipo de proyectos eh, tuvimos que pararlo y hasta, hasta ahora pues logramos volver a, a tener el tiempo para, para volver a trabajar en él entonces eh, pues lo que nos dio eso más la experiencia que hemos tenido más, más esas cosas, pues lo, estamos tratando de de dejar pues lo que lo que más nos sirve de ahí y estamos tratando es de, de mejorar lo, lo, los otros elementos que se puedan utilizar. Con permiso voy a traducir. Ajá. So Jordan, uh, basically the um, the physical uh, elements, you know, the, the scientific aspects of the game, that's really, you know, things that they're the uh, advancing in the game is based on those factors. Uh, what they're using as far as monetization techniques or what have you, I mean, those are really based on gadgets that you acquire, you know, I guess little um, extra things that you can acquire while you're playing the game. It's kind of hard to visualize what those will be without having seen the game, but these are gadgets that you can acquire to help you advance through the different levels. That's what I was wondering. Those are the monetization, and those are the monetization uh, methods that they're using uh, currently. Um, they are trying to expand on that because uh, obviously the project was really uh, initiated last year. They had to put it a little bit on hold. Now they're going to be having more time to come back to it, uh, and they're hoping to, you know, do better on the monetization front to try to improve what they currently have. Uh, but that's the, you know, the gist of what he was explaining. He is going to share with us, I guess, some of the art, perhaps. And yeah, the I'm wondering if there's like there's like that we can see, see for. for oh. Uh, Could you repeat? Because I, I lost you. I was wondering if we can. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes. If, if we can, if we can, a demo, demo, or present, present. I think that would be uh, helpful. Let me um, tell Andres. Uh, Andres. Uh, okay. Sorry, sorry. I, I think sí. uh, when when you're not talking, so if you if you, you mute yourself, you will really help the echo. Ah. Okay. Thanks. I will mute now. Maybe Luis, you can do part of the translation in terms of asking uh, Andres for a demo. Oh yeah, yeah. I already, I already was chatting with him. He's sharing right now the documents. They do, they don't have a demo demo. They have uh, some animations uh, proposed for uh, mechanical, like game mechanics proposals, and then they have the art. One so, question, so, Luis. Is, yeah. is everyone on the call now? So we have more people on the call. We have Annabelle and Angela. Or mm -hmm. and, uh, uh, and uh, Maria and Angelica, I think. Yes. So, um, are all three working on the same game with Andres? Yes, they are a part of the of, of the team. Same team. Okay. So yeah. One team, and yes. one game, and yes. okay. And the, so they they're currently at a prototype stage. Yeah. Yeah. They have uh, they have story. Uh, Um, character development, art direction, and then right now they're deciding on the mechanics. Hmm. Okay. In the game mechanics. So yeah, I was uh, I was talking to them last week, and I was just analyzing uh, what is what's the experience they wanna they wanna give to the player. Uh, what's the best mechanic uh, with with the the platform there is and the like mobile platform. And I'm based. Uh, they started with the art, so the idea right now is to go back and decide on the mechanic before moving on, mm -hmm. so we know actually what the game is for. Because like monetization, art, everything is based out of the of the game mechanic yeah. that is picked up. So yeah. So I think in the document, if you guys have it shared, you should be able to see art, and you should be able to see in the 
the proposals for the game mechanics. Okay. We can't see anything yet. Oh, Andres? Dime. ¿Le compartiste a ellos el, el documento? Sí. Eh, por favor, que verifiquen a ver si... Si, si les llegó o no. Can, can you guys check your email? No, oh, he sent us our email. Yeah, he, he shared it's a, it's a Google Docs. We'll drive. We'll drive, yeah. I don't know which... You sent it to the uh, Double Nova one? Mm, no. But I think... Okay. I didn't get the... anything yet. Or I think it's group in... Oh, Radhika, you're muted. You're talking? I haven't received anything. Radhika, did you get it? Did you get it? I did. I got it already. Um, did you want me to <laughs> share the dry, share, uh, share the screen or something? Or? Yeah, maybe that. Maybe that. I haven't got okay, it. Let me, let me screen share. Okay, that would be good. That would be good. Your email is always, always on the planet, planet. I don't know why you're... Why you're um, um, Are you seeing? Yeah, it's just... Yeah, it's just we're always having... I don't know if it's still... It's still it's 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 plug and replug and replug and your, your headset. Um, let me oh, unplug yeah, it. Be, be. Maybe... Yeah. Let, let me take myself off headset. Okay. Right now there's uh, too much echo. Is that better? I think so. Is I took off my headset. Yeah, I think that's that's better. Okay, sorry about that. Yeah. Uh, so, are you seeing my screen? Yes. So yes. here's the uh, concept art week one. <coughs> you can see, I guess, the environment. Uh, there's a. Uh, <laughs> this is the boss. That's the boss, boss mobile. Okay, and then these are, I guess, the, the various characters. Okay. And uh, the gadgets. The gadgets. Oh, this looks a lot like. Um, it reminds me of um, what's it called? Uh, there's that uh, console game. Um, it's very retro. It's um, Bio Bioshock, Bioshock Infinite, Bioshock. Hmm. Was there? Um, did did the team uh, like? Um, was were they influenced by the art and some of the things in Bioshock? Estaban influenciados por uh, et otro juego que él conoce que se llama Bioshock um, y está preguntando si su equipo estaría, estaría, uh, estuvo influenciado o, o inspirado de, de ese juego. Eh, pues personalmente yo no, pero voy a ver las imágenes a ver si... So, not Andrés personally, but, um, you know... I, I don't know, uh, Andrés, que uh, hay otros miembros de tu equipo que, que estaban uh, inspirados de este juego, Bioshock. Eh, la verdad no es, no estoy 100% seguro. Tal vez, tal vez no, pero, pero ahora que miro las imágenes sí tienen un, un toque por ahí. Igual estos 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 gadgets pues también tuvieron su evolución porque el juego no es tan tan dramático, o sea, no es tan como crear ese, ese ambiente de tensión, sino al contrario, pues es más, más tipo Angry Birds, pues que es como más divertido y porque Movo es un personaje pues particular, es si, similar a Homero Simpson, por así decirlo, es como torpe, gordito, pero pues él no hace las cosas porque, porque no quiere, sino porque él es así. So, uh, es, estos fueron los primeros conceptos. Uh -huh. 
So Jordan, he was saying that you know, in his opinion, it wasn't really to his best, to his knowledge, it wasn't really inspired or anything by um, Bioshock. Mm -hmm. In fact, he said the the flavor of the game, he said, is not as uh, confrontational. It's yeah, more, sure. much more much more you know pacifist in in a sense like Angry Angry Birds or whatever because the main character um, you know he's a, a little bit of a a bumbling uh, you know clumsy kind of person you know and a uh, little little dumb I would say and trying to figure things out mm. you know there's there's a it's a different flavor altogether uh, but this right, is it's your initial for the art. Not so much the the gameplay. I, I haven't seen the gameplay, but it just looked like the the art was maybe. It could be. It could be he said there may be an element of, of similarity, like you mentioned, perhaps the, the retro aspect. He didn't mention that specifically, but I think that's what you're referring to. It's the retro, and it's just the kinds of things. Like in Bioshock, they have that um, diving suit. Right. Is because uh, everything's underwater. Right here, here those are like shields. Um, I think, if I'm not mistaken, Luis Escudo says shields, right? Yes. Um, and then these are like yes, neutralizing, yes. neutralizing gadgets, and then there's uh, uh, sucking. <laughs> it's like a vacuum motion. Mm -hmm. um, and then these are freezing. These are areas, various things that you can freeze things with. Yeah, but you see, everything is very analog. Yeah. Uh, not digital, right? It has that very kind of retro, retro kind of feel, and yeah, it looks, you know, like maybe turn of the century, <laughs> the last century, not the current one, <laughs> like 1800s, 1900s, early 1900s kind of a feel. Um, Andres, lo que estaba diciendo Jordan es que tiene un sentido que um, en en otro siglo, un siglo, siglo. Um, que es, uh, no es del, uh, de, de, este, de este siglo, pero el último. <laughs> um, tiene ese, ese elemento más, uh, no sé cómo decirlo en español, analog, <laughs> más que digital. Ah, sí, claro, más análogo. Uh -huh. Sí, más análogo. Gracias. Um, so, I think, let's see, there's more. Yeah, here's some more artwork. Let me cycle through these. These are the objects, I guess, the little different obstacles. Son obstáculos. Sí, ahí son pruebas porque el juego lo pretendemos hacer en una técnica que se llama tilet. Entonces era probar que funcionara bien. Okay, so these are different things that they've been trying out, um, um, trying to work out, I guess. Mm -hmm. Um, esa es, esa es la nave, la nave de, de, de Movo. This is the vehicle. Ajá. Y en el segundo, eh, pues es como está bien y después del, pues del accidente que tuvo, pues pierde todas estas piezas que están al lado derecho. Entonces esos son elementos que también tiene que recuperar para poder seguir avanzando luego entre entre planetas. Disculpa, uh, ¿había algo más? No, 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 está bien. Eh, ¿Radica? Sí. ¿Can you hear me? Sí, yes. Uh, maybe you, you should go to the folder. Eh, there, eh, ok, uh, libro de arte, modo. Maybe you can open the, this, this file and you can see like the, the art of the game, but in a... In a in a better like like the the, the oldest the okay. oldest art. So let's I guess we'll cycle through these. Um, and there's a libro. Uh, ¿Qué es el libro? Hay algo más? Uh, libro de arte mo. Yeah. Eh, sí. Aquí mm -hmm. está ¿Dónde? como más estructura del juego. ¿En qué carpeta? Um, atrás. Mo. Dale atrás. Um, I Arts Week 2. Okay, and more arts. Esta? In Documentos, in the first folder. Arts Week 2. There's one that says Art Week 2. Estos? Mm. Mm, I see, so these are going to the next level. Yeah. 
by the way, Andres was saying when it, for the uh, the uh, ship, the the spaceship. Yeah. Uh, basically, it gets into an accident, so they start losing a lot of parts. <laughs> and so through the course of the game, they have to re reacquire these parts. I see. Right. To to bring them up. Okay. So he made a reference to that. This is the uh, spacesuit time freezer. Okay, let's see, go to another one. Um, no, I don't understand. New concepts. No. I can't seem to open. No lo puedo abrir. El new concepts. Yo, yo te compartí dos carpetas. Creo que. A ver. Creo que está en una carpeta que se llama Movo solamente. Que está más atrás. Mm -hmm. I guess this is um, like a trajectory. Labyrinth. This is the when you're floating in space, when you're navigating in space. Okay. Um, ¿Hay otro en la carpeta? Eh, hay otra carpeta. Esta es una carpeta que se llama Movo Arts, pero hay otra que se llama Movo, que también te compartí. Entonces creo que los otros documentos que refiere Angie es en la otra carpeta. Uh, no, no, solamente le compartí. No, Movo solamente Arts. hay Movo Arts que recibí. Voy a revisar. He's going to share another folder. Andrés. Sí. Hay otro. Voy a volver a compartirte. ¿Tú me escuchas? Sí. Ya. Dame un segundo. ¿Cómo? A mí me parece que sí acá, pero no. Hmm. No lo veo. Ah, sí. Hay otro. Okay, so the in in uh, documentos. Sí, en documentos. Taller. Libro de arte. Idea. Uh, um, libro de arte. Ajá, uh -huh. sí, correcto. So this is their art book. Um, okay, so it's style. Um, let me try to translate. I guess there's uh, um, there's uh, different ideas that they're exploring for names: mobile space, space explorer, space messenger, space odyssey. Um, so he's basically uh, you know a space uh, traveler or messenger, if you will, mm -hmm. um, that he has to basically take various cargo packets in his uh, spaceship to various destinations. And uh, because he's a bit distracted and, and he's not really all that intelligent, <laughs> he, uh, <laughs> in the beginning of the journey, he, uh, he didn't foresee that there, were, there was a danger that was uh, disastrous. Uh, and so basically he, he lost parts of his uh, spaceship and the, con and the contents in space mm -hmm. <laughs> in various planets. <laughs> wow. And now he's got to, to sort that all out with all the... All the uh, the uh, the challenges and the uh, the less than visible zones or you know more obscure zones in order to re recuperate his uh, his lost cargo. Um, so question, you know, it it often is good to look at other games that are using this similar uh, kind of theme to see if they were successful. And so, are there other games that they are familiar with that? Um, have have proven successful with this particular model. Eh, está preguntando que si um, su equipo habrá um, uh, jugado con otros juegos que tienen uh, temas uh, similares, porque es un, una buena buena idea para averiguar si hay otros juegos que tienen temas similares que que, que tenían éxito. Ya. Yeah para averiguar si hay un interés en este tema y el desarrollo de este tema. 
Eh, pues nosotros hemos hecho un research de, de, de videojuegos similares, uh -huh. pero pero no hemos logrado encontrar así uno muy 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 parecido. Tal vez en alguna en algún momento con, con Angry Birds con Angry Birds Space uh -huh. también trabajaba un poco el tema de física uh -huh. eh, y otros juegos que no recuerdo en ese momento, pero pero es muy poco eh, los juegos que utilizan así como la física. Yo lo veo más como un juego como <coughs> en ese momento como Kid the Row, por ejemplo. <coughs> Por el, por, el, por el hecho de que esperamos de que cada nivel tenga una solución eh, definida, por así decirlo. Mm -hmm. So he, he's basically saying that they, they did do some research, but they hadn't found anything that was um, a one-to-one -one match. Uh, that, you know, it's kind of like, a, as he put it, this could be, it could be thought of as sort of an Angry Birds in space uh because of the physical sort of um the physics of it and the elements of that but other than that they really haven't found anything one to one match with with what they have in mind right because i mean with with angry birds there's more confrontation right mm -hmm. there's birds versus pigs yep and so that is a bit different in terms of the game mechanic uh there is physics obviously with angry birds but the mechanic here is more of an adventure game, it sounds like, and which is very different from, you know, a, uh, it's kind of like, a, you know, you're, you're trying to shoot down these pigs, you're trying to, um, trying to destroy the pigs. <laughs> so it's very confrontational, there's, there's violence, <laughs> right. whereas here it's more of like, you know, it's a pacifist game, it's, it's much more casual. Mm -hmm. rather than, you know, as uh, violent <laughs> as Angry Birds. <laughs> uh, es, lo que estaba diciendo Jordan es que um, la diferencia uh, princip princip principal es que en Angry Birds es, es, una, es una tema, es un, es un desarrollo más violente, <laughs> que hay confrontación y aquí es, uh, no hay um, ese, ese elemento de, de confrontación, ¿no? Que, sí, claro no hay uh, ese mismo sentido y, es, y eso es uh, algo que es um, diferente <risa> no se puede comparar uno a uno uh, pero lo que hay para el otro juego de Angry Birds es que si hay um, un elemento de, de competición no <risa> porque tienes que matar <risa> esos uh, cerdos <risa> um, y si, cómo se puede enganchar el, el jugador en este juego aquí. So I was going yeah. to translate a little bit uh, back to you, Jordan. I, was yeah, just... I, I understood most of that. Okay, got it. So that, that sounded good. The, the concern I have is with any of these games, you know, you're trying to make them fun. Right. But there also needs to be an element, like you had mentioned, of competition. Right. There has to be some element of... Um, The hook. Yeah, something that's going to make people want to come back. Mm -hmm. And with, with all of the most successful games, you're leveling up, right? Mm -hmm. Like in Angry Birds, there's levels, right? Mm -hmm. you, you go through one level and you want to get to the next level. Right. And then, you know, you get to the next one and the next one, and then it becomes harder and harder. There's always, with all the successful games, It be everything becomes harder and harder. I mean, even Flappy Bird, right? It's just very hard. I've been playing uh, two different games recently. Um, I've been playing, you know, Zombieville, which is a really old game. And I've also been playing um, Hill Climb. And in both of those games, and, I, you know, I've played Clash of Clans and, all, and, and, and Angry Birds and all of them. But the thing is, in all of them, the game becomes harder and harder and you can measure your progress, right? Mm -hmm. You have a very clear idea of where you are numerically and so you can compare with your friends and, you know, what's coming is also multiplayer, right? Mm -hmm. Multiplayer is kind of the next, the next dimension that's coming. So I'm wondering, in this game, It sounds it sounds intriguing. It sounds interesting. Mm -hmm. But where's the competition? Where's the leveling? What is there? Where do, where does all of that uh, take place? 
Um, estaba preguntando que, que eh, en lo que estaba observando es no, no se puede um, um, entender exactamente cómo um, el juego uh, se avance en, en diferentes niveles de dificultad y por ejemplo en Angry Birds o Flappy Birds hay niveles distintos ¿no? y cada nivel se avance en, 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 en dificultad. Y, uh, y, y en este juego hay cosas similares que porque esos son los métodos que en que los jugadores avancen quieren jugar a, a conseguir a lograr al nivel próximo y que continúan a enganchar los jugadores no sí y si hay algo uh, porque es el, el, el sentido no es tan uh, confrontacional aquí no hay ese, ese ese tema de violente uh, aquí, pero si hay cosas que son distintos en cada nivel que enganchan los jugadores para que tienen ese 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 meta de, de lograr el, el nivel próximo, ¿no? Y que quieren avanzar al nivel próximo. Even in Candy Crush or you know Cut the Rope or any game, right? There's very distinct levels. Right. And there's this sense that you're rewarded, right? There's there's a reward when you and that that whole you do something, you get a reward. You go to another level, you get mm -hmm. something, you know, right. more. You're that that's very addictive for people and makes them want to keep playing or or compare with their friends or whatever. Y también estaba comentando que uh, dos cosas que que en, en los otros juegos que ha observado que son exitosos que en cada nivel um, eh, eh, hay un hay una, eh, elemento de, de competición que puedes compartir, lo, eh, las, las medidas de, de éxito son, son muy claras y que se puede compartir esas medidas que has logrado un, uh, algo en ese nivel y se puede compartir con otros jugadores, eso es un elemento que, que había comentado y ahora mismo comentó también con, con los otros uh, juegos como Candy Crush uh, que hay um, distintos niveles en que si logras ese nivel um, hay algo que, que se puede, hay un regalo, um, uh -huh. hay algo que, que, que puedes uh, tomar, uh, ganar uh, en ese nivel y después avanzas en, 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 en el nivel próximo y uh -huh. utilizas lo que has ganado en el nivel próximo. Sí, sí nosotros hemos considerado eh, varias cosas eh, de esas, inclusive en este momento parte del equipo está eh, trabajando en, en hacer la revisión y hacer prototipos pequeños de, del tema de, de compartir, de bonificaciones, de cómo manejar la tienda a través de, de gestores de, de estos elementos, eso se ha tenido en cuenta, eh, sino que eh, en este momento estamos retomando eh, el juego y llegamos al punto en que eh, inicialmente se pretendía de que modo se desplazara eh, a través del uso del acerenómetro del, del dispositivo, pero, pero creemos de que de que ese, no, ese, ese modelo de desplazamiento o de, de movimiento del personaje no es como tan, tan atractivo. Entonces, estamos retomando precisamente en este momento, eh, haciendo algunas mecánicas sobre, sobre el tipo de desplazamiento que se va a tener. En ellas, pues, eh, es, algunas que estamos trabajando es eh, presionar, por ejemplo, o tocar en parte de la pantalla y que ahí se genere un campo de gravedad. Mm. Es todo lo que todo lo que esté cerca, pues dependiendo de su masa, pues se va acercando. Entonces ese, por ejemplo, podría ser un modelo de desplazamiento del personaje. Uh -huh. Sino que ya, ya, ya estamos es, haciendo como la validación, el prototipo, primero en video, por, para poder ver si, si visualmente pues es atractivo, uh -huh. antes de poder eh, trabajar ya un prototipo como tal. Entonces, eh, 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 pues no hemos avanzado en esos otros temas porque nos parece esencial eh, tener muy bien definido esto porque inclusive si, si esa es la nueva mecánica ya los gadgets tal vez no vayan a ser los mismos o tal vez las ayudas sean diferentes uh -huh. entonces eh, ahí estamos un poco como, como retomando ese tema uh -huh. 
um, voy a traducir que uh, so Jordan he was explaining that those are very much the themes that they're trying to develop at this point you know just trying to figure out the, de the degrees of difficulty and, and how they would advance in the game they are exploring some interesting things like using sort of the touch screen kind of a method to that you would be able to the main character gets displaced into a different part of the of the of space and that now has uh, various advantages or disadvantages based on the gravitational pulls mm -hmm. so they're trying to play around with certain things and what they're trying to develop right now is you know prototyping it in video mode to see okay. if the result is something that is attractive and 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 you know that it would be uh, interesting uh, to, to players, so that is something they're they're kind of revisiting and and, and looking at actively as a team right now. Um, they haven't yet developed all of the uh, you know the ins and outs currently. Also, are they uh, is this supposed to be something that's going to attract primarily a male audience or a female audience or just everyone? And trying to understand that because I don't know if they've done research to see that different kinds of games lead to different kinds of you know, player mm -hmm. interest. Um, esta, estaba preguntando también si han, han um, uh, averiguado si, si este tipo de juego es más atractivo para mujeres o hombres o um, lo que están um, uh, intentando con, a, a lograr uh, como audiencia, ¿no? Uh, ¿Qué es la, uh, la meta? Pues... La verdad no hemos hecho... Porque hay, hay, hay ciertas uh, cosas de, en, en, en términos de marketing que uh -huh. si sí, están pensando que el jugador ideal, que es el profil, ¿no? el, el perfil para, para, para ese jugador, que es un hombre, es una mujer uh, um, de uh, edad mayor, menor, uh, qué tipo de, de perfil están pensando cuando están desarrollando este juego y también mm, mirar a otros juegos, uh, averiguar si es, esos otros juegos que son exitosos tienen enganches con ciertas, uh, cierta población, ¿no? Y, y ese, ese, ese también es un, es un factor en, en cómo se diseña un juego. Uh -huh. Vale, so, perfecto. Eso es... So I said, okay, I to work on it. So uh, just to re re uh, translate back to you, Jordan, uh, he, they had not really thought about target audience very much. Okay. And I was basically telling them that might be a good good thing to think about in terms of game design is having a, a certain customer profile in mind. Um, yeah, I don't know if they uh, recently saw researched that. The, the articles along uh, Kim Kardashian's, you know, successful game. Um, so there's a lot of um, actually most most players on mobile tend to be women, mm. and they're actually not only are most players women, uh, but they actually monetize better than the men. Mm. I see. Uh, so targeting, I mean, also if you look at the kind of game that the Kim Kardashian game is, is it's a sim. Mm. Uh, sim games like Sims. Uh, where you have somebody who is kind of going through their life. Like mm -hmm. in the Kim Kardashian game, you're trying to be a star, right? Yeah. And, trying to be a celebrity. Yeah, you're trying to be a celebrity. And so that kind of structure, if you look at Sims, which is very was very popular for EA, yes. um, it was mostly a female crowd as well. Mm -hmm. you know, where you start out in life and you know you get a career or you build a house or you know you 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 do some kind of a sim which is based on reality mm -hmm. uh, the more the fantasy ones like uh, space like mm -hmm. they have as well as um, fantasy like mm -hmm. you know battle games mm -hmm. tend to be more male right mm -hmm. um, and so, and social turn-based games also tend to be more female, like, you know, the ones that are on Facebook. Which kind of games again? Social turn-based. Mm, I don't know how to translate that. <laughs> okay, I just need... Uh, Luis, are you there? Yes, yes. Uh, I wonder if there's a better way for you to explain social turn games and... So, uh, like, uh, social turn-based. Can you give me an example, Jordan? Yeah, I mean, anything that's... 
turn, right? Is so every every uh, um, if you look at like uh, Farmville or any of the games where you take a turn, right? Oh, I see. Turn. Oh, okay. That. I, okay. Yeah. Now I understood what you meant. Juegos, ¿no? Juegos de estrategia por turnos. Entonces, donde, donde también como Clash of, Clash of Clans, donde pasa algo, pero no puedes atacar al mismo tiempo, sino uno ataca y espera que lo ataque. Actually, can I, can I share my screen for a moment? Oh, let me stop sharing. Okay. Yeah, let me just... Uh, yeah, stop sharing. Screen. Because I'd like to show you... This, this research is a little bit older, um, but... Uh, let me see here... Google. Let me um, share my screen again. Va a compartir su pantalla. Let me know when you can see my screen. I can see it. Okay. Can everyone Andres? see? Puedes ver, Andrés? Andrés? Sí, ya. Ya estoy bien. Ajá. Ajá. You can see it. Okay. So what you can see here is this is the percent female. Mm -hmm. What you can see is, is social turn-based games, mm -hmm. <coughs> Sims management, mm -hmm. endless runners. Mm -hmm. These uh, tend to be slots and solitaire. These are very female, so 60% to 100%. Mm -hmm. These, like casino poker, is, is typically a man's game, right? right. So it's more, more male. Anything, anything fighting or action <laughs> is, more, is more male, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. but these are more, more male kind of games. These are more female. Mm -hmm. The interesting thing is, is women monetize better mm. on the types of games that they like. So, so right now, for, uh, for mobile, it actually makes sense to target women because they're more of the market and they monetize better than the men. Um, and so that's that's something to consider because it looks like the team has a lot of women on it. Yeah. And so, you know, the sensitivities and sensibilities of the team might be more in touch with the target audience. Right. Oh, can I interrupt for a second? Sure. I wanted, I wanted to add that I've seen that uh, here in the, in the team, in the Prestor team, Hmm. That the input of a woman, it's uh, it it makes a difference. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, so I think that that Andres can use that to you can use that to your, to your advantage. Yeah, and, and what you can see here is that um, you know the, but it, it it matters what kind. It sounds to me like the game is more of an adventure game. Yeah, and I think it's more of an adventure game. Yeah, and adventure games tend not to monetize that well, and they tend to be more of a niche, mm. you know, so it's, um, if you can make it more like a sim, you know, where the person changes over time or goes through levels, mm -hmm. um, or there's some kind of a, a turn-based structure to it, well, that would be kind of hard with a single player, but I, I just know that that is... I think if you go in one direction or the other, it, it has to become more action-oriented, mm -hmm. right, if you want to get the male audience, mm -hmm. or it needs to go maybe more sim-oriented. To get the female audience. Female audience. But right now it's kind of in the middle. Yeah. And I don't think this category you, you're going to see being very, very popular. Mm -hmm. um, the ones that have been popular, like Angry Birds, or... Yeah, they're much more confrontational. Yeah, those are... And they're more male. They were at the beginning, right? So yeah. if you look at Angry Birds and you look at Clash of Clans, they're, they're much more about attacking, right? Yeah. And so they're very male. If you look at Kim Kardashian's game or Candy Crush, they're more level-based. Yeah. And you're trying to... Uh, you're getting rewards, right? And you're you're moving up to a higher place, and it's not confrontational. And I think, well, I think you know, from that standpoint, they are working on the different levels and so on. So I think there may be an opportunity to come up with the right uh, formula, if you will, of what what levels might or might not work. Uh, you know, the reward-based systems or so on that you could build into the uh, to the levels and advancing through the levels which might appeal more to the female audience. Yeah. And those tend to be not confrontational, they're more reward-oriented. Yeah, exactly. And so I think from the nature of this game, as, as I have seen it, as you've seen it, 
you know, since it's a non-confrontational kind of game, uh, maybe there's ways for them to really think about how to monetize from a level to level, what rewards are being awarded, etc., uh, to to entice a, a more female audience. Yeah. Um, voy a tra traducir a, a un poco, Andrés, lo que estábamos, com lo que estábamos uh, comentando es que uh, nosotros observamos que el juego uh, no es uh, muy efectivo en, en el, en el um, presente uh, para audiencias que son mujeres o hombres, es un, es un poco en el medio. Uh, si ve el... el uh, uh, no sé cómo se dice, Luis, ¿cómo se dice graph? ¿Gráfica? Sí, la imagen gráfica que, que nos mostró Jordan, que uh, para juegos sim um, y también uh, con, uh, ¿cómo se dice? <laughs> Social turn-based, otra vez, Luis. Juego, juegos de, de, um, basados en, en... Juegos por turnos. Uh, um, ¿Por turnos? Sí, por turnos que esos juegos um, eh, son más efectivos con audiencias de, de mujeres eh, y que monetizan mejor que los otros juegos y también con los, que las audiencias de mujeres se monetizan un poco mejor que las audiencias de, de hombres y que las audiencias de hombres eh, son uh, juegos de estrategia, juegos más confronta confrontacionales, uh, hay un elemento de violencia Um, y esos uh, se monetizan mejor con, con audiencias que son, uh, que son hombres. Y lo que estaba comentando Jordan también y, y también Luis, que con tu equipo, que mm, hay bastante representación en tu equipo con mujeres, que hay una ventaja para ti, para utilizar uh, las ideas uh, de, de tu equipo y para, para pensar en cuáles son las formas de enganchar una audiencia que, que sería para, más para mujeres. Quizás es una ventaja uh, de desarrollar tu, tu, tu juego uh, en, en una manera que es más, uh, más atractivo para las mujeres. Y si hay un elemento sim, um, quizás, o de, 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 estuvimos hablando de avanzar en los, en los niveles, y cada nivel tiene su, su hay algo que, que, que es que vas, que puedes ganar una cosa que es un sentido que no es violente más uh, pacifista pero al, al mismo tiempo que, que con cada nivel estás uh, logrando una cosa uh, ganar ganar uh, algo que, que te puede uh, se, servir de ventaja en el nivel próximo uh -huh. Y ese sería una, un método de, de enganchar los jugadores que más uh, mujeres que hombres. Entonces, ¿ustedes recomiendan que enfoquemos el juego más hacia el segmento de mujeres? Sí, porque no hay un, un elemento violente, ¿no? Uh -huh. Y con, uh, con los uh, jugadores que son hombres, pues uh, hay un elemento de, no solamente de estrategia, pero... Uh, <risa> que se, tiene que, tienes que matar algo o <risa> tiene que ser algo violente, ¿no? Y con este juego que es más, uh, más pacifista, pi pienso que es mitad aventura, mitad estrategia. Um, pienso que hay uh, elementos de sim que se pueden incorporar, incorporar con este juego. Sí, inclusive nosotros tratamos como de, de acercarlo un poco a ese segmento. Uh -huh. eh, desde, desde la historia tal vez porque pues él tiene su familia y, y a la final él no quiere perder su trabajo es por no decepcionar a su familia entonces sí. tratamos de, de generar ciertos componentes como para generar ese tipo de emociones de colaboración sí. que sí. se destaca más en el segmento de mujeres ¿no? sí y entonces hay, hay, hay formas que se puede monetizar a cada nivel um, hay algo que, que, que se puede ganar y esa cosa que estabas ganando en cada nivel se puede utilizar como ventaja en el, en el nivel próximo sí, 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 acercar tu meta final ¿sabes qué Andrés? perdón, interrumpo un momento eh, yo creo que algo importante también puede ser tener constantes entonces vas a ir tomando decisiones y eso les ayuda entonces Sí, si yo tomo la decisión de la mujer o en el target que sea, ustedes siguen constantes como una ecuación. Ustedes van llegando y van resolviendo basado en esa constante. No, es. Ya. Igual también tendríamos que ver eh, hasta qué punto el tipo de, 
de, de, de trabajo artístico que se está haciendo también se enfoca hacia ese segmento, ¿no? Si vamos a tomar la decisión de, de, de cambiarlo, pues también tendremos que decir por un estilo un poco más adaptado, sí. más cute. Eh, pienso que el, el personaje también, si es más uh, una mujer que está tomando ese, este, este viaje, <risa> uh, quizás hay algo, hay, hay un elemento que se puede escoger también el, el personaje. No solamente un personaje, pero hay dos o tres personajes que se puede um, escoger. Um, can I share the screen again? Is that okay? Sí. Jordan quiere uh, compartir su pantalla. Sí. Otra vez. Um, so one good thing about um, here's another. So one good thing about adventure is that it's um, it it builds engagement, and there's a direct correlation between engagement mm -hmm. and in-app purchases. Mm -hmm. so if people are playing it longer, mm -hmm. they tend to want, um, you know, to, because they're, they're putting time in, mm -hmm. they want to spend money to make that time more valuable. Mm -hmm. And so what you can see is, is that strategy, trivia, adventure, and family games, as well as role-playing, Mm -hmm. These have the highest um, highest percentage of in-app purchases. Mm -hmm. You also get um, more engagement. So adventure, strategy, and family have longest average daily session length. Right. I so, think you know. Uh, in that sense, uh, also, I wanted to mention. Uh, I don't know whether that came through in in the conversations or whether you understood. There is an element in the game currently about. Uh, family honor, like they don't want to to disappoint the family in in going through this voyage, if you will. That they have to. There's an element of preserving family honor, I guess, or or integrity. Okay. And so there's this whole family sort of theme running in the background as well. That you know you want to make your family proud of what you've achieved. Okay. And so that was something that Andres uh, mentioned a couple of times. That I don't know if that came through in my translation. Yes. Um, so that was something I wanted to mention. Andrés, uh, no sé si comprendiste uh, lo que estaba mencionando Jordan, que hay um, para um, eh, las, uh, las compras uh, dentro del juego, en, de la aplicación, uh, in-app purchase, uh -huh. y para juegos de aventura de, ¿cómo se dice? No sé si es como, Luis, trivia en, en español. Igual. Igual, trivia. Sí. <laughs> Y también, uh, so, uh, estrategia, trivia, aventura, familia. Eso son temas que, que se puede ver en las uh, imágenes gráficas que tienen más uh, enganches, enganches con, uh, con los jugadores uh -huh. y que tienen, se pueden um, monetizar mejor en términos de, de compras en, dentro del app. Sí. Sí, yo veo... Sí, por favor. Yo veo un poco el juego como en el lado de estrategia y aventura, pues podría ser. Mm -hmm. So he's saying that the positioning could be much more strategy adventure. Yeah. Uh, rather than anything else. Yeah, and that's best for engagement, and there is a storyline as well. Right. 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 So that creates engagement. So there's a difference between. You see, you can have with a strategy and adventure game, you can have high engagement, but you might have very few users. Mm, I right? see. So you might have 10 users who are all spending money, mm -hmm. but you just don't have many users. So the thing is, is that this category definitely generates um, high engagement mm -hmm. and a propensity to purchase, but you also have to have something that is going to generate a lot of people playing and so it has to have something um, there's something exciting about it mm. there has to be some mechanic to get people excited and, and then use word of mouth lo que estaba diciendo Jordan es que en juegos de estrategia y aventura uh, lo es, son claramente uh, algo que, que se puede enganchar más a jugadores uh, y esos jugadores no son muchos, pero esos, esos ciertos jugadores van a, 
van a comprar más en el juego, etcétera. Pero también tienes que tener algo que se puede uh, coger uh, más descargas, ¿no? <risa> Para el juego. Y ese hay, hay otros uh, otros elementos que tienen que te, tienes que tener en el juego para que uh, el, como el, de, el nivel de, de, de descarga se, sería alta. Uh -huh. So, uh, Luis, I don't know if I did a, an effective job of explaining that. If you want to comment. Yeah, can you hear me? Oh, my, yeah. My computer was here. yeah, yeah, I, I think I think he was, yeah. Okay. Um, the media guys, Andres, ustedes también entienden, eh, ustedes también entienden el inglés, ¿cierto? Viene cuando cuando Jordan habla. Sí, sí, en la mayoría de casos está bien. Ah, bueno, sí, yo entre entre las dos también entiendo a Jordan un poco. Entonces, estoy bien. So the good news, Jordan, is that the, for the most part they're understanding what you're saying, so that's good. Yeah, that's good too. It's still supplemental here. Yeah, that's great. Um, so I think the the positives are is that they're coming up with a game that has the potential for high engagement. Um, it also has the potential to engage. Um, I don't know if it will necessarily engage women because of the. It seems to have more of a masculine theme. Yeah. Um, and so that might be something to consider right. because it's base and it's uh, it's a boy. Right. Um, but you know there may be a girl version of it. <laughs> right. I was I was actually I I did offer that and say you know it might be a good idea to offer a selection of different personalities that they can choose. You know, you can either choose to be a guy or, or you know, a girl in this game, and that might be something they could think about. It's not just limited to one main uh, character, maybe have a couple of different characters that they can be, you know, that's more of a, a uh, you know. Yes, yeah. because like in Angry Birds, there's all the different kinds of birds. Exactly. For example. There's a customization element in terms of the kind of, uh, uh, character you would like to be in the game. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. I did explain that earlier briefly. Um, uh, Luis, uh, I don't know if you wanted to comment a little bit more on that at all. Uh, no, I think it's, it's, okay. it's so clear, yeah. Yeah. Um, but what, what I'm seeing just is just, um, it's just kind of time to make some decisions right. in the game to, yeah, to, to focus the efforts. It's, well, I think the thing is, is that there's enough data now. Like, if you looked three, four years ago, there really wasn't that much information and data about what kinds of games do well, what can, what kinds of games you know lead to uh, purchasing behavior, and and what what kind of games have the most types of purchases. But now there's enough players, there's enough data. And what you'll see these days is that mobile gaming has become very data-driven. Um, some of the investors that we work with, they invest only, well, I shouldn't say only, team is always important, but they are very strict about the monetization and uh, game um, player acquisition statistics. And they believe that it's very, you can pick winners just by looking at the numbers. Mm -hmm. And so right. if, you look at, if, if you look at that, it's very important to look at the game type and figure out the audience. And, you know, in the, in the old days, you could just kind of come up with a story and then hope <laughs> that it's going to be successful. Right. But now it's more of, trying to figure out what are the components. Right, and the analytics. Yeah, Yeah, and, and also uh, like figuring out the how much is like if you are planning, what, I'm going to switch to Spanish. Si están planeando, eh, o cuánto están planeando invertir en, en user acquisition, no, no todos los targets valen igual. Entonces, eso también es importante saberlo para, para saber el target del juego. No todos los targets de personas ni en todos los países eh, es el mismo precio por jugador en user acquisition. Sí, claro. Pues nuestra intención eh, es tratar de generar un juego que, pues, que genere ese enganche y que sea atractivo para poder eh, trabajar con algún publisher. Esa es la intención 
de, de que la parte de promoción y, y mercadeo, posicionamiento y replicación, pues sea inversión de publisher, porque en este momento no tenemos como eh, un gran capital, por así decirlo, para, para invertir en posicionamiento. Sí, you know, Jordan, he was just saying that the, the overall intent is to create a game that is attractive enough to, that they can um, go through, a, to attract a publisher. Yeah, that makes sense. Well, one thing, just going back to, I was just thinking with the Bioshock theme, one thing that makes Bioshock very, uh, very compelling and, and, and drives people to play it, it has a very good story, but there's also the girl-boy attraction Uh, within the game, um, which I know with uh, my older son, for example, when he was playing, it's it's you know there's the he's the guy and he's supposed to protect this woman, <laughs> the, the, the little sisters, and there's there's this interplay between the the male and the female yeah, female dynamics, yeah, male female dynamic, which makes it stickier. Hmm. Um, And so I don't know if that's something that, that you've considered, um, especially for a female audience, um, potentially, yeah. is, you know, having, collecting things and, and being able to have uh, some connection between, say, the main character and trying to find a woman, if it's a boy or, or, or If it's a, a girl, you know, maybe it's this boyfriend, girlfriend, or you know, boy girl kind of interaction. That might be interesting as well. Y lo que estaba diciendo Jordan es que en Bioshock, por ejemplo, hay, hay um, no solamente hay una tema de una, una historia que, que están um, ese tema está desarrollando en el juego, pero también hay un elemento de atracción entre entre los uh, los niños y las niñas en el juego. Uh, novios y novias o lo que es o, o hermanos hermanas o lo que sea hay un dinámico entre entre los dos uh, sexos y este se puede incorporar hay, quizás que se puede pensar si hay una hay un, una manera de incorporar este evento hay un dinámico de relaciones personales uh, dentro del juego um, o sea que si el personaje principal es un niño o un hombre Uh, que está buscando una mujer o, 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 lo, o el opuesto, uh, que si, si eres una mujer uh, que estás uh, buscando un novio o lo que sea, pero hay una, un, din un dinámico entre los sexos y ese se, quizás sería una idea uh, de pensar uh, si hay algo que, que se puede implementar. Sí, listo. Vale. Estoy tomando nota de todo lo que... Sí. Entonces hay, hay varias, varias cosas pues, que se pueden pensar y experimentar con esas, que en esa, con esas ideas uh, a ver si hay manera de enganchar una audiencia que para un juego de estrategia y, y aventura que quizás hay un elemento que se puede um, enganchar más la audiencia de mujeres o uh, lo que sea, pero o, o si, es, si es algo que se puede dedicar a, los, a, a, a la audiencia de hombres, um, hay otra 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 forma de, de estrategia que es un poco más uh, competitivo. Sí. Yeah, definitely. With the masculine audience. Yeah, so I said, you know, there's different ideas you can think about, uh, whether you want to target a, a female audience or a male audience, and then, you know, experiment with those, with those ideas, uh, just see if there's ways to implement those that can, you know, engage one or the other audience. Yeah, definitely. Um, But those will help to monetize, right? To to go and use the techniques that you know have been successful. Mm -hmm. Que lo lo más importante es uh, tener en cuenta uh, las estrategias uh, que ya están ya están exitosos, uh -huh. ya han probado en el mercado y son exitosos para un razón u otro y eh, averiguar cuáles son esas estrategias que tienen uh, éxito, ya están uh, probados y ahora esos, esos, uh, esas mismas estrategias se, puede, se pueden incorporar, incorporar en, en su juego. Sí, perfecto. And there's really three things to keep in mind um, for the success of games. And first thing is strong, uh, you know, player acquisition. Mm -hmm. So the players can be acquired quickly, and then they spread rapidly by by word of mouth. Mm -hmm. 
The second is um, retention. So, you know, maybe the game quickly grows, but then everybody leaves, right? And so you, you also have to have good retention. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, after 90 days, say 50% of the players are still playing. Right. That, again, so that's the second thing is retention, not just acquisition. And then the third thing is monetization, mm -hmm. right? Because then those players are not only there, and, but, you know, you have to get paid. <laughs> <laughs> keep them engaged and that they want to spend. Yeah, so those are the three things to keep in mind is acquisition, strong acquisition, strong retention, and strong monetization. And there are numbers for all of those okay. in terms of understanding, you know, is it strong or not? And we can talk about some of those numbers as well, but did you want to communicate that? Yeah. Eh, lo, lo que estaba comentando Jordan es que la idea es de tener um, tres factores um, que son um, que contribuyen al éxito de, de un juego. Uh, a la primera um, la primera idea de, es adquirir los uh, jugadores y tener esa cómo se dice en, en, en Luis word of mouth. I, I, I was trying to find the direct translation for that. Um, en voz a voz. Voz a voz. Voz a voz, ok. Que hay um, maneras de adquirir uh, jugadores voz a voz uh, y eso es la primera. La segunda es retener esos, esos jugadores para que vengan uh, después de, de un mes uh, que están al menos unos 50 retenidos como jugadores en juego. Y la tercera es la monetización, um, que es las, los jugadores que, que se quedan, ellos están um, uh, motivados a, a comprar y, y, y uh, um, gastar dinero ¿no? en, en el juego. Y esos métodos, sí, para todos hay, hay ciertas medidas uh, en el mercado que, que se pueden uh, estar um, pendientes de, uh, de esas medidas y hay esas medidas de, con uh, analítica que se puede um, medir uh, el, el éxito del juego uh, en términos de adqui adquisición, uh, retención y monetización. Sí, perfecto. Sí, esos son factores también que nosotros tratamos de trabajar siempre que diseñamos eh, un juego, eh, tratar de, de hacer eso. Eh, incluso en este momento, pues, el tema por el cual decidimos volver a retomar el tema de la mecánica principal de juego es el tema de retención. Uh -huh. sí. Entonces, eh, pues estamos, vamos a trabajarlo eso, pues también vamos a, a revisar el tema del segmento de mercado, a ver si, sí. si lo orientamos a, hacia las mujeres y, y pues esa es una decisión que, 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 pues que cambia un poco el sentido del juego, pero si a la final eh, pues es una decisión eh, que va a pesar más eh, a futuro, pues simplemente hay que hacer el esfuerzo nuevamente para, para reestructurar ahí la idea del juego. La, la idea es que con, con esas medidas que están uh, uh, enfocando, es, con, con esas medidas, que hay um, estrategias que pueden implementar para lograr cada una de esas medidas. Y es, es, eso es la estrategia de uh, el, la mecánica del juego, ¿no? <ríe> Cómo se puede diseñar un juego con esas mecánicas Uh, analíticas uh, que se pueden lograr esas metas de adquisición y de retención y de monetización también que cada uno de ellos tiene, tiene algo, hay un elemento del juego que, está, que es uh, implementado con, con, con una estrategia de adquirir jugadores, de retener jugadores y también monetización. Sí, perfecto. Sí, sí, sí. Perfecto. So they, you know, Jordan, they're also looking at the analytics as well, and they're, they're trying to think about the various strategies that will help them <coughs> achieve those uh, uh, acquisition, retention, and monetization goals. Yeah. Okay. And yeah. The, the target market, uh, the target segments, that kind of thing was probably something that they might not have fully considered before, uh, that they, they're probably going to go back and think about ways that they can define that target audience a little bit better. Yeah, and, and something to keep in mind is that, um, you know, there's a something called the CPI, which is the cost per install, mm -hmm. and the cost per install is um, somewhere between $1 to $3, mm. typically. Um, it can get higher than that, and, uh, for example, during the holiday season. 
Mm -hmm. um, but the um, and what you want to do is, is the monetization, the revenue per user. You want to have higher than your cost per install. Right? I see. Um, right. And the longer that users are playing, it's kind of like you know that those are the uh, the revenue mechanics, right? Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. I think. Um, no, I was thinking that uh, maybe we just we can leave these for the next sessions. Yes. Yeah, and fine. wrap it up here. Yep. I think that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. yeah. It's a lot of information. In yeah, I know. It's a lot to, <laughs> to digest in one go. Yeah. I, I think the, the main thing, though, that they need to consider is it's more than just building, um, you know, an idea, right? It's You really need to take into account your target audience, need to take into account how you're going to make money, and then, you know, what are the mechanics that you're going to use to keep the user engaged. Uh, Andrés, no sé, no sé si era más claro que lo que decía Jordan, es que um, hay, no es una cuestión de, de diseñar un juego, uh, pero también diseñar un juego con esas medidas uh, uh, para, uh, un, como son metas, ¿no? De cómo vas a adquirir jugadores, cómo vas a retener esos jugadores y cómo vas a monetizar esas, esos jugadores. Y con un uh, segmento del mercado a una audiencia que es mujer o hombre, lo que sea, el perfil ideal. Sí, sí, estoy totalmente de acuerdo. Eh, esa es eh, pues la estrategia que hay que utilizar, o sea, tener unas cifras para poder uno apuntar sus, sus estrategias de juego hacia, hacia, hacia aprovechar esos segmentos pues, que se generan ahí. Eh, eso es algo que quisiera también eh, pedirles a ustedes. Uh -huh. Pues Anabel es quien... quien quien se encarga de ese tema de, de mercadeo y de cifras y demás, para que si pueden compartirnos eh, algunas fuentes de información para nosotros en la siguiente sesión poder eh, tomar decisiones basadas en, en cifras, pues eh, será, será lo mejor que podemos hacer. Entonces eh, sería bueno tener como esos, esas, esas, esas fuentes de información para poder eh, pues hacer ese contraste ahí o esa comparación de, de estrategia. Um, so Jordan, he, he was saying that, you know, these are definitely things that they're thinking about and that in the future sessions one of the things that they might really be appreciating is if we shared resources or links or so on um, you know sources of information that they can we can work with uh, Anabel who is really on the side of marketing and, and numbers and analytics and so on right. and that we can work uh, to sort of uh, highlight the various resources that, that uh, she and of course the rest of the team can, can take advantage of um, as they're thinking about these different strategies. Sí, seguro. Okay. okay, muchas gracias. Eh, pues sí, yo quería decirles que pues para nosotros es muy importante eh, todo este tipo de datos y todo lo que Jordan y tú nos has y, e igual eh, pues todos nos están nos están compartiendo estas cifras. Eh, somos conscientes que tenemos que aprovechar el buen momento que la industria está viviendo. Eh, las cifras lo demuestran, eh, la venta de dispositivos lo demuestran eh, y más que aprovechar eh, pues todo todo como esa revolución de aplicaciones que en estos momentos está viviendo pues toda la toda la, toda la industria. Sí. Eh, muchas gracias por las recomendaciones que nos dieron, son, son cosas que de pronto no habíamos tenido en cuenta a la hora que diseñamos el juego. Eh, Movo es nuestro primer juego en el cual vamos a a tener en cuenta todas, todas, todas las cifras de mercado, vamos a tener en cuenta eh, todo lo que está pasando eh, a nivel global para que nuestros consumidores finales eh, pues tengan ese enganche que nosotros queremos eh, y deseamos para, para también pues para la, para, para la aplicación, ¿no? Eh, estamos trabajando muy duro en, en, pues, en toda la parte de consecución de información y cifras para ver cómo guiamos cada una de las aplicaciones y en este caso modo eh, pues para que sea un éxito eh, y, que, y que podamos tener como esa experiencia de poder decir, bueno, logramos, no sé, eh, 500.000, 600.000 descargas en cierto tiempo. Entonces, eso para nosotros es muy importante tener en cuenta todo lo que está pasando en el mercado a nivel mundial. Eh, pues agradecerles, estaré escribiéndoles a cada uno sobre, yo me, yo me encargo de toda la parte de mercadeo, eh, ya hemos tenido cierta experiencia con algunos otros juegos que hemos, que hemos desarrollado y pues poco a poco eh, podemos involucrar cada vez más en el, en el mercado global. Muy bien, eh, con gusto. 
So Jordan, she was just uh, on the one hand, she was thanking us for the insights we provided today that they found quite useful, um, and then also that she's looking forward to being in touch with us individually and dually um, going forward, so that they are you know really able to take advantage of all of the. Uh, metrics that are out there for in terms of a global market since that is her responsibility is to be in charge of the marketing and the downloads and so on and making sure that the metrics are achieved um, that uh, she'll be working with us a little bit more closely as well hopefully okay great okay gusto. Yeah, thanks a lot thank you Jordan okay entonces nos vemos con Raika y Jordan el viernes next Friday nos vemos el viernes. Bueno, muchas gracias a todos por, por participar y por darnos esta información tan importante. Es un placer no. hablar con ustedes. Ya, yeah, mucho gusto. Sí, vaya. Sí. Hasta Thank viernes. Okay. Bye. See you. Thank you. Yeah. Bye, everyone. Bye. 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 Bye.